going to take some time today and discuss smoke units, uh, specifically how they work and tricks that you can use to uh, improve the performance of the smoke units on your locomotives and accessories. Um, we'll call this Smoke Units 101. We have four types of smoke units in the Lionel product line. The first type is a bowl smoke unit. The example of a bowl would be a smoke unit used in a burning switch tower or a uh, hot sauce smoking box car. Um, can even have uh, bowl smoke units in uh, burning hobo hotels, etc. Basically, what a bowl smoke unit is is you've got a you've got a bowl with uh, batting in it, and the batting is what actually holds the smoke fluid so it's not puddling in the bottom of the uh, reservoir. Then you've got typically a circuit board with a heating element on it, and this heating element ranges in uh, resistance from 6 uh, all the way up to 30 ohms, depending upon the product and how it's designed. And basically you're putting power and ground to the heating element, it gets hot, as a result of it getting hot, the fluid that's in the batting wicks up to the element, and changes from liquid to vapor and the smoke is produced. Uh, there's, no, there's no propellant forcing the smoke out, it just wafts out of the bowl. Um, this is used in smoking cabooses. Uh, the intent here is not to have a full stream of smoke come out, but rather just have the smoke waft out. And when you have it in a caboose and you're adding air resistance over the stack, and oftentimes it's uh, very difficult to see that smoke coming out unless the car is sitting stationary. The second type of smoke unit that we have in the product line is a sooth smoke unit. And basically all this is is a hollow cylinder with a heating element right in the middle. Uh, sooth is actually a brand name. It's a company out of Germany that makes these smoke units. The heating element in the center gets hot. The fluid is inserted from the top. Typically, what will happen with a sooth unit is if you put too much fluid in, say here, nothing will come out. It's just too much fluid for this heating element to heat up and turn to vapor. So typically what you want to do is just put a small, maybe two or three, maybe four drops of fluid into a sooth unit to get it to produce smoke. Same concept as the bowl. It's just designed to waft out of there. The vapors will actually follow the heating element up and typically with a sooth unit you'll get a stream of smoke that comes out because it follows this heating element right up the tube and out. The third type of unit that we have is what we call a mechanical smoke unit. These are typically found in uh, post-war trains, post-war steam locomotives. A lot of the Lionel, uh, Lionel product lines for the starter set will have a mechanical smoke unit. Basically you've got a uh, a cap that sits on the sits on the bowl and two holes in the cap with a resistor or heating element again the resistance can go anywhere from uh, 18 to about 30 ohms uh, sometimes these will be exposed wires sometimes they'll be ceramic coated uh, it all varies depending upon the design of the product so the cap sits down on the bowl Inside the bowl you've got the batting. Again, the batting holds the fluid, wicks the fluid up to the heating element. Inside the bowl itself you'll typically have two holes, uh, very small holes over on the sides. Those holes are directly connected to the bellow which sits at the bottom of the bowl. This bellow actually has a plunger that runs up and down and Based on a cam on the driver wheel, as this cam rotates around, it pushes this bellow up, which provides a puff of air that pushes out a puff of vaporized smoke out of the stack. Um, really very simple mechanics here. Typically these holes will be directly underneath the stack, so when you put fluid in, it goes right into the batting or drops right on top of the element which is typically a bad thing, which we'll explain later. But uh, the fluid sits in the batting, heating element, uh, vaporizes the liquid, the smoke is pushed out of the stack uh, from a 
puff of air from the bellow, which is driven off a cam on the wheel. Pretty basic. And finally, the fourth type of smoke unit we have in our lineup is a fan-driven smoke unit. These are typically found in most all of our Hobby Line products. A fan-driven smoke unit is pretty simple in concept. You've got a die-cast reservoir that has a small fan motor mounted to it. On the shaft of the motor is an impeller. That impeller spins, which it sucks air in through the top hole and pushes it through the, the heating chamber and pushes the smoke out of the stack. This uh, on diesels will typically run all the time. On steam, on some earlier TMCC1 steam locomotives, uh, when the train sits at idle, there's no smoke, and the fan motor fan motor only pulses when the sound system makes a chuff. So that's how we synchronize the puffing smoke with the chuff in the sound system. All of your fan-driven smoke units have a circuit board on the top. You've got an outlet hole in an air inlet hole and the resistor is either mounted to the board by soldering it or two uh, small screws, washers and nuts that will hold it on there. Um, same basic concept, fluid resides in the batting inside the heating chamber so that it's not pooling. The fluid is wicked up to the heating element through capillary action. You've got a heat source, the fluid wicks up to it. It goes from a liquid to a vapor, and the airflow generated by this impeller forces the air out of the stack. We're going to take some time today and talk about how to improve the performance specifically on fan-driven units, but the concept also applies to all the other smoke units as well. So to recap, we have four basic smoke units in our product line. We have the bowl, the sooth unit, a mechanical unit, and a fan-driven unit. So when you add smoke fluid to your locomotive, typically what you'll use is you'll use an eyedropper or turn the bottle upside down and put the smoke fluid in. We, um, in customer service, we don't do that. We actually use a, uh, a needle applicator on a, a large bottle. We get these from a, a company online. And what this allows us to do is this needle allows us to actually put the smoke fluid in the physical batting of the smoke unit. So to give you an example, we've got a, a circuit board here on, say, let's just say a, a fan-driven smoke unit. So we've got our heating chamber that has our batting in it. And by taking that needle applicator, we're able to put that needle all the way down whatever the flue is, or the funnel, all the way past the heating element and put the fluid right into the batting. This does a couple things for us. Number one, it prevents us from putting smoke fluid all over the top of your locomotive and then having to wipe it off and then set it back to you and try and play it off like we didn't do it, but we don't do that. What we do do is we use this needle applicator. It gets the fluid through the shell, the outlet hole of the smoke unit, uh, through the funnel, down into the smoke unit, and into the batting itself. Where the problem comes in is when you apply, or when you add smoke fluid to your smoke unit, what you're doing is you put the fluid drops in, they run down whatever your funnel is, and then some of it drops down into the batting, but a good majority of it sticks to the side of the funnel and lays on the underside of the PCB. What this does for you is when you start running the locomotive, it builds a meniscus or a film over top of the outlet hole right here. All of a sudden, the vapors that are being generated inside this smoke unit and being forced out by the airflow ceases to exit the locomotive. So the engine's running along, it's smoking great, and all of a sudden it just stops. It stops because this fluid that collects on the underside of the PCB with that airflow has come across and filmed a, it has created a film over the exit hole of the smoke unit. We call that a meniscus. That meniscus blocks that smoke fluid or that smoke vapor from coming out. So to correct it, we ask you to blow down the stack. You put a big puff of air down the stack, it breaks that film, all of a sudden the smoke comes out. 
Again, we use those needle applicators so that this doesn't occur to us here in service. We put the smoke fluid in with the needle, get all the way down into the batting, add the fluid down here at the bottom of the heating chamber so that it's absorbed in the batting and brought up to the element and your smoke ejects without any film or uh, meniscus filming under your or forming underneath your stack. It's also important to note that anytime that you get smoke fluid that lays around the, uh, the stack or the funnel itself, the smoke fluid will actually cling to that fluid that lays in that flue or that funnel. So certain diesel applications will have a, a funnel that looks something like this, where the outlet hole for the smoke unit is here. The outlet, the outlet hole for the smoke unit is here, and the outlet hole on the top of the shell is over here on either side of the funnel. So when you put your fluid in, your fluid drops come in, they lay all down here on the bottom of the funnel, they lay here on the inside of the brass fitting on the top of the smoke unit, and then it lays under here underneath your circuit board. So it's really a catch-22 when you add smoke fluid to a diesel with a funnel like this. Um, this would be like an F3, F7, uh, even the larger E units like the E7, E6s where they've got a funnel that has uh, four or six exit holes on it. It's all being driven off of one smoke unit. So as this funnel grows, you're just putting more fluid inside that funnel for that smoke vapor to collect to, which ultimately leads to at the exit port, you've got less smoke, which would make you think right off the bat, oh, well, my smoke unit's bad. No, smoke unit is either going to work or it's not going to work. So when the smoke output is weak, you either have a meniscus starting to form or you've got smoke fluid laying inside the funnel. So how do you correct it? The easiest way to correct a scenario like this is with a pipe cleaner. Just take a, a fluffy pipe cleaner, go down the stack, and try to absorb as much of this fluid laying inside the funnel and on the top of the circuit board as possible. Sometimes it'll require you to disassemble the locomotive and then hit these, these accessories with uh, canned air. Um, real simple way to blow those out. We actually encourage you not to hit these with canned air when they're assembled because what will end up happening is you end up spraying smoke fluid all around the interior of your locomotive. You get those on the electronics and typically bad things happen and uh, you're calling us to get an RA. Um, so the needle applicator, even in an instance like this, we're able to at least get the, the fluid into the, into the, through the shell, downward on an angle to the funnel to minimize the amount of fluid that we have on the funnel or the, the uh, brass casting on the top of the fan motor or smoke unit as much as possible. The, uh, the other thing that's important to note is that, again, the fluid needs to be in the batting, not on the element. I'm going to show you a little experiment here in a minute why that's a bad thing. In some of the newer Vision Line locomotives and some of the other locomotives that have Vision Line features, uh, where you've got smoking whistles, uh, steam cylinder blowdown effects, um, I'm sure there's something else I'm forgetting. But nevertheless, um, oftentimes what you'll have inside the locomotives, you'll have as many as three individual smoke units, such as the um, Vision Line Challenger. Vision Line Challenger uses a dual, bowl, a dual smoke unit in the front and then an individual smoke unit in the back to provide the dynamo and the steam release that comes out from underneath the cab. So on a dual bowl setup, I'd like to just kind of give you an example here you'd have a very large heating chamber. Heating chamber is where the batting resides. And then typically you'll have a divider in the middle of this uh, chamber. The batting is, I'll show you this here. The batting is one piece. It's all the way around. It goes underneath this divider and it comes up on the back side. So the batting is, an, is one solid piece stuffed into the heating chamber. Then what you've got is you'll have a separate element inside one side of the bowl and you've got a separate heating element in the other side of the bowl. The stack is where you put the smoke fluid in. 
So you come down the stack into the bowl. This side here, assuming this is the front of the locomotive and the cab is back there, this side of the bowl is the primary stack smoke unit or smoke element. So this one's pretty much hot all the time when the smoke unit is enabled or is on. So it's and the fan motor that's pushing into this is pulsing to puff the smoke out. When you activate the whistle, that's when the fan motor for the whistle smoke activates and pushes the air through here to blow the smoke out of the whistle. It's not uncommon for you to run the locomotive for 20-30 minutes without activating the whistle, then blow the whistle and all of a sudden you've got no smoke coming out. You have no smoke coming out for two reasons. One, this element here actually goes to a, um, a, a low setting, if you will. It stays marginally warm, but not hot. So it's not typically producing smoke all the time. You blow the whistle, it tells the circuit board, okay, heat that element up, it heats up. It may take you six or seven blasts of the whistle to start seeing smoke come out. That's done so that this thing doesn't stay hot all the time and end up charring the batting. In the event that the fluid is low or, or most of the fluid is being used by the primary stack, what fluid is left sitting in the whistle chamber is actually going to not get hot, not turn to vapor until you trigger the whistle. It'll turn on, take 5, 6, 12 seconds, hit the whistle again, and boom, smoke will e eject from the whistle. So. Anything that has these type of uh, dual smoke units or multiple smoke units, that's typically how they work. They're done that way so that we can extend the life of this chamber, the batting specifically and the element, extend the life of those, those two components. If they're not being used, they're not making smoke. They're, they're warm, they're not cold, but they're also not hot, so therefore it's not vaporizing the liquid. With TMCC-1 locomotives, the receiver itself can be programmed several different ways and we've covered that in the programming uh, video that we did earlier. Basically the TMCC1 receiver can, can change its outputs on the smoke unit several different ways. Typically on a diesel what you've got is if you press AUX19 and you hold 9 down the voltage to the smoke unit will be 14 volts as long as you hold 9 down. When you let off 9, the voltage drops to about 12 volts, and it will stay constant at 12 volts, at which point the smoke unit will run fine. The, um, the reason it goes to 14 volts when you hold 9 down is actually called smoke boost. We're just putting a little more voltage to the smoke unit to heat that element up faster. Once it reaches temperature, you let off at 12 volts, it runs great. Legacy locomotives that have three levels of smoke work quite differently. I'd like to take just a few minutes and explain to you how this works. Number one, you actually have six levels of smoke on a legacy locomotive. We have what we'll call off. Smoke unit is off. Then we've got smoke low. We've got smoke low stationary and we have smoke low moving. There's a difference. If the locomotive is sitting still and the smoke unit is off and you press AUX19 or smoke on, what actually happens to the voltage is the voltage goes from off all the way up here for a short period of time and drops down to smoke low. It does the boost for you and it actually takes the voltage to the element higher than high moving. Get to that in a second. So that's, that's smoke, that's low smoke, and that's, uh, that's low stationary and low moving. The next level we have is medium smoke stationary and medium smoke moving. When we go from, look, let's just work on stationary for now. Now we've got the engine sitting still, we press AUX19 or smoke on again, the voltage has gone from low stationary to medium stationary. It boosts the smoke again. And when I say it boosts the smoke, it puts extra voltage to the element to get it hotter faster. Then finally we've got high stationary and high moving. You'll notice that these smoke boosts are higher in voltage, more voltage, 
than what we have at high stationary or high moving. We're here at medium smoke and we're sitting still. We hit aux 19 or smoke on again to go to smoke high. It comes up and goes back to high stationary. Now, high, low, stationary, and medium, stationary, medium, stationary, medium. What that means is when the locomotive is sitting still, it's stationary. When you turn the throttle, if we turn the smoke to, we turn the smoke on to low, and the locomotive is sitting still, then we crack the throttle and get the engine running. The smoke unit will actually, the the regulator that powers the smoke unit will actually bump the voltage up on the low setting. You can try this with your locomotive at home. Put it on the track, turn the smoke unit off, turn the smoke unit on to low. Watch the smoke as it comes out. It'll just start to peter out of the locomotive. It'll be really light. Then crack the throttle and watch how much more smoke volume comes out of the stack. Same thing applies for medium and high. Um, this is just how we've designed the legacy locomotives with the smoke units. It's designed to improve the performance. Uh, you don't have to lay on the 9 button anymore like you did with TMCC1 locomotives. And again, there's six, really seven levels. You've got off, low, not moving, low moving, medium not moving, medium moving, and high not moving, and high moving. When the smoke is on high and the locomotive is actually moving down the track under its own power, that's when the voltage to the smoke unit is the most for the longest. Again, when you go between off, low, medium, and high, it does spike the voltage for a very short period of time, just a couple of seconds, to superheat that element to get you up to temperature so that you can take that liquid and turn it into a vapor. Something that's real important to note about adding smoke fluid to a locomotive. You want to make sure that the smoke unit has been off for about two to three minutes before you add fluid to it. That sounds strange, but in just a little bit we're going to perform an experiment that's going to show you why that's important. What happens is when you put smoke fluid, you put smoke fluid into your locomotive and that smoke fluid is at an ambient room temperature. Then you look at the element and the element itself is hot. It's somewhere around 190, 220 degrees Fahrenheit inside that batting. What happens is you take that, that fluid that's room temperature and drop it right onto that element itself, that fluid will actually crystallize. And by crystallizing, it will not change from liquid to vapor. Whereas if the fluid goes into the, goes into the smoke unit, all the way down to the bottom, it's put into the batting and then through capillary action pulls up through the batting to the he heating element. During its time at the bottom of the unit to the element itself, it's got enough time to heat up. It goes from ambient room temperature up to whatever the temperature of the heating element is inside that chamber over a period of time. So that ambient room temperature smoke fluid dropped right onto a hot element like I said, actually crystallizes on the element. What happens then? No smoke. Doesn't matter if you turn it off and turn it right back on, it still won't smoke. What you need to do, if that happens to you, is shut the smoke unit off and leave it off. Four, five, six hours overnight, a couple days, whatever it takes. What needs to happen is that heating element needs to get down to room temperature that uh, fluid that's crystallized on there needs to go back to room temperature and then it'll run off that element, absorb back into the batting and be given the opportunity to heat up at the same rate that the fluid heats up if it were in the bottom of the bowl or in the batting being brought up to the element. Again, customer service, we use these needle applicators. When we put this smoke fluid in, we go in right past the element. The element's sitting here. We go right past it into the batting. We don't have this problem with these needle applicators. Really encourage you to go out and grab some of those. It'll save you a lot of grief when you're putting fluid into your trains. I'm going to do a little experiment here next and show you exactly how that happens. Okay, what we have assembled here is a CW80 transformer. The circuit board off of an 8057-200 smoke unit, this is just a standard diesel fan-driven smoke unit, 
and a cup that we've cut the top off of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this cup with smoke fluid. Okay. Connect the leads to my smoke unit. Turn the smoke unit on. I'm going to let that heating element get hot. This, uh, this unit here is a 27 ohm element. Um, you can see it's starting to smoke now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, whoop, I'm going to submerge this heating element right into the fluid itself. And as you can see, it stops smoking immediately. The reason it stops smoking is because that's too much fluid. It just, the fluid is right on the element. It just won't, it's just not enough. If I get that element out of the smoke, fluid itself, you can see it starts to vaporize. So what this is showing you is when you've got a hot element and you put your fluid right into the smoke unit and all of a sudden it doesn't smoke anymore, this is why. There's, there's just too much smoke, there's too much smoke fluid for the element to handle to heat up. Turn that off before I keep shorting it out. This is why it's important for that smoke fluid to be in the batting. Being in the batting, it'll wick itself up to that heat source, go from liquid to vapor, and boom, you've got smoke. The uh, legacy locomotives that we produce today typically have a 6 or 8 ohm element in them. Um, they work a little bit differently than this simple setup where we're just putting straight AC voltage to the heating element. They've got a, a uh, alternating current regulator, an AC reg in them, and that reg actually alternates the current to the element to uh, allow that resistor to produce the most amount of heat, or at least a controlled amount of heat, inside that heating chamber. So that fluid hits that element while it's hot, crystallizes, smoke is out of the question. Some of the earlier TMCC1 locomotives will have, a, uh, will have a sleeve over top of the element. The original intent of that sleeve was to have the smoke fluid at the bottom of the heating chamber wick up through the batting, absorb into that sleeve, and then coat the element 360 degrees around the entire length of the element to generate smoke vapor. Unfortunately, in execution, that didn't work real well. Typically what will happen, or what has happened, is the fluid in the batting runs out. The, element's complete, or the element is completely surrounded by this, uh, this sleeve that doesn't have any fluid on it. It gets hot and it chars. When it chars, the smoke fluid won't wick into it anymore. Or if it does, it's very, very weak. You can typically tell this has happened to your smoke unit if you look into it and you see a lot of brown or black charring inside the smoke unit. You want your batting to be uh, like a golden brown color is fine. A dark brown, burnt brown, or a black color is bad. That typically means that the fluid is not going to wick to the heating element, therefore it's not going to generate as much smoke. Um, we did actually do a video a number of months ago that we put out on the web on how to upgrade TMCC1 smoke units. That video is really only good for TMCC1 fan driven smoke units. It does not apply to legacy or vision line locomotives at all. All recent uh, production line L products, legacy and even conventional for the last, I would say probably three or four years, has no sleeve on the element, so it's not a concern. But some of those earlier TMCC1 engines will have the sleeve. It's just uh, bad mojo, if you will. Uh, get rid of the sleeve, and uh, you want the exposed wires right in the batting. If you have a TMCC1 locomotive that's got poor smoke performance, and you want to upgrade the element or upgrade the smoke unit, you can find that video online, or you can send it to us at customer service. There's quite a few uh, brands of smoke fluid on the marketplace today. Uh, when you're using Lionel locomotives, we strongly suggest that you use the Lionel premium smoke fluid that we do produce currently. Uh, most all of our dealers have it in stock. The Lionel premium smoke fluid is what's used in the development process. Uh, when our engineering department works on a new smoke unit or a new design for a locomotive, 
tunes the code on the regulator for that unit, um, they're using Lionel Premium Smoke Fluid. That is what's going to give you the best results in your locomotives. There's other brands out there and they're great fluids, but for optimal performance on Lionel locomotives, the Lionel Premium Smoke Fluid is the way to go. We hope that uh, this video has been helpful to you and uh, if there's anything, any questions we can answer, please email us at talk to us at lionel.com or contact us at 586-949-4100 extension 2.